come on zoom oh sick of it ah. I'll have to stand up for this now because it's oh f sakes hi guys I'm Dean and welcome back to another edition of the Nebriologist Yeah, so this week, yeah, got a barley wine to try, um, which I think it's been an absolute age since I've had um, like a barley wine, so I'm really looking forward to this one in particular. Yeah, so without further ado, this beer is... Ah! Ah! Jesus. Right, there we go. So, <laughs> it took an absolute age for this to uh, focus, stupid camera, but this beer is called Yubnub and it's a collaboration beer by Vibrant Forest and Emperor's Brewery. Yeah, so as I said, I'm extremely um, happy to be trying this now. Uh, I was gonna keep this actually for another couple of years, but I thought, no, oh, bugger it, I, I, I really wanted to try this one. The two breweries, um, which, you know, they're well known across the UK, Oh, well, I, I know that Vibrant Forest are one of the well-known sort of breweries across uh, the UK. But yeah, Emperor's Brew, um, I think there's just, uh, from what I gather anyway, is there's just one guy, I think, who's uh, who does all the brewing and stuff, um, Damien. But from what I've heard, some of the beers that he does release are absolute belters, because um, he does a lot of barrel aging and stuff like that, from what I gather. But at the same time, his beers are like the hardest things to get your hands on because uh, I've been on some of the forums and stuff and um, you know they're released uh, on a one or two websites and then that's it after after the release time um, you know it is literally fastest fingers first to uh, purchase in the stuff and then that's it once once this stuff's gone it's gone that's it you know so hopefully if I get to try this and it ends up being one of the best things I've ever put into my mouth um, I will try to uh, try to source some more of the uh, Emperor's Brew stuff, but you know, it's not to take away the fact that Vibrant Forest are not that great either. Vibrant Forest are probably one of my favourite breweries as well. Their beers have been very, very consistent over the years. Um, I do particularly like their uh, cask range, uh, especially when I do pop across the the border and I go to Bristol. Well, obviously not now because we're all in this stupid lockdown but yeah when I do have the chance to go over to Bristol uh, there's usually a lot of vibrant forest uh, on cask there which I do enjoy so without further ado oh sorry I forgot to forgot to mention about the ABV as well it is a nice sort of sessionable well-rounded 12.7 percent ABV but I quite like the design on this actually to be to be honest it's uh, it's got like the little Ewoks on there and stuff, which is uh, yeah, it was quite nice. Yeah, but this is a um, it's a black barley wine. There we go. So it's not just any old barley wine. It is a black barley wine. So, without further ado, time to get into a glass and see what we got. Um, yeah, since it is a you know a barley wine, I do like to enjoy my barley wines in a nice sort of uh, nice sort of glass like the like this. I haven't got a Vibrant Forest one uh, or anything like that, you know, I've just got like a, a Trappist Rochefort uh, stem glass So um, Yeah, I thought it'd be nice to pour into this and just contemplate life and uh, You know just sip away on a really nice sort of barley wine. So uh, Yeah, so time to get into a glass. Here we go. Yeah, I don't want to pour too much into the glass because, um, well, that's the thing, I won't be able to have a proper smell on it and stuff, really. But, uh, but yeah, by the looks of it, it is... Uh... Oh, come on, zoom. Zoom, damn it. Anyway, oh, there we go. It kind of zooms. There we go. So, yeah, there's not much of a head on it, to be honest. Uh, when, as soon as you pour it, you know, it's uh, it kind of carbonates a little bit. But, um, yeah, there's not much of a... Not much of a head on it. Uh, as far as colour goes though, it's a really nice sort of um, 
deep sort of cognac -y sort of red colour really. It's like really, it's like as if it has been sort of aged on red wine casks or something, you know, because it's taken on this really nice sort of uh, cherry, cherry hue. I can tell this is this is going to be a, a strong beer anyway. I can see with the legs that are kind of, you know, like the, they call them the tears or the legs that come down on the glass, you know, and it's uh, the alcohol legs. But yeah, I can see it's it's going to be a going to be a strong one. It looks like a, a fantastic barley wine anyway. So uh, yeah, so time to get a smell, I think, and see what we've got going on. Oh. That's such a lovely, lovely, lovely smell. This is like, it's like Christmas in a glass. There's a lot of complex sort of smells going on in that. It's like the, like rum and raisin type of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's like raisins, figs, like winter fruits, um, all sorts, like really, like really dense caramel, um, like candied, candied sugar, sort of toffee. There's a lot going on in that. It's an amazing smell. Um, very, very similar. To you know, like I I love my uh, Belgian beers and stuff, and it is it is quite close to, as you know, as the glass states there, uh, like a Trappist Rochefort Ten, which is like a, a quad beer, you know, and it does it smells exactly like that, or a West Fleetron or something like that. But yeah, very complex smelling. It is like Christmas cake in a glass uh, with lots of like yeah cognacy, really boozy sort of notes in there. So uh, can't wait to try this. So. Cheers, everybody. Oh, that is delightful. Absolutely delicious. And what I like about this is that it's not, it's not overly sweet. I think sometimes with barley wines, it can be really, really sweet. But this is well balanced with everything else that's going on there. It's got that slightly sort of bitterness at the back from like, uh, like slightly burnt caramelized sort of sugar that sort of alcohol burn as it goes down it's a pleasant sort of alcohol burn it's not like really overwhelming and it just completely like just makes everything really unpleasant well it's not even an alcohol burn it's just like a nice sort of gentle pat on the on the throat as it goes down that's proper good that would be really good with some really nice strong mature cheddar cheeses or or something like that, you know. As I said, yeah, because it, it is like Christmas in a glass, like raisins, figs, dark winter fruits. It's got that sort of caramelization going on, slightly burnt sort of quality to it as well. And that's another thing as well, is that with this beer, you know, it's not only just sort of like really dark winter fruits and stuff, you know, you have got like that really sort of dark, rich sort of chocolate in there, as well as like, uh, like the coffee flavors as well. And sort of like a, a nice warming, cognac finish to it but yeah this is the first i've had of uh vibrant forest like really dark sort of beers well actually tell a lie i think that one of the last vibrant forest beers that i did have actually again it was in bristol was the um black october i think it was it was like an imperial stout was it black october i'm doubting myself though it was yes black october but and that was that was a really nice sort of well-rounded imperial stout very similar to this when it comes to like the body as well it's not to the point where it's cloying and it's overwhelming or anything but it's just it coats the mouth just right absolutely fantastic if this is the the litmus test for for the emperor's brewery stuff you know i can't wait to to try some of the other stuff from that brewery because uh yeah, it's just, if, it's, if this is anything to go by, then I, I guess everything else is, is just going to be amazing. Yeah, so the score, I'm going to give this beer. Because I'm just so impressed with the the balance of flavours, the bitterness, how it counteracts with the sweetness and everything like that. You know, and I know sometimes with collaboration brews, uh, you know, some beers don't always turn out to be the way that they want them to be type thing, you know, or they could be too much influence one side from the other uh, and it ends up being sort of, I don't know, messed about a bit. But yeah, the collaboration between these two uh, has been spot on. And for that, you know, the re you know for that reason, I'm going to give the markers a, a 4.75 out of 5, just because this beer, it does remind me of it, like Christmas time, uh, just enjoy it yourself. And yeah, the flavours of this is it's probably one of my favourite types of beers you can have. 
uh, you know, it's either like a nice strong English barley wine or if it, even if it's like the Belgian quad beers, you know, the, um, yeah, the flavours are very reminiscent of each other, you know. Vibrant Forest, a great brewery, and I'm looking forward to trying more from Emperor's Brew uh, as well. So, um, yeah, highly recommend if you do manage to find a bottle of uh, Yabna out there, I'd highly recommend fantastic stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to... Uh, <laughs> Damn you, 12.7%. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe for more beer videos. I shall see you very soon. Yakida.